So I really want to try weaving. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I've just been watching lots of videos where people are weaving with their yarn and I have this loom here that I've never used and I would like to know how to use it. So <clears throat> let me just tell you um, a little bit about what I have uh, and my plan and then we'll see where it goes from there. So this is my loom that I have. Um, little history, uh, this was a free throw-in <laughs> for buying my spinning wheel. So uh, I found my spinning wheel on Facebook Marketplace. Um, a lady was selling it at a flea market four hours away from where I was living and I drove all the way out there and paid $100 for my used Ashford traditional spinning wheel. Um, the bobbins are a little chewed up. It didn't come with a flyer. Um, the drive band needed replacing. Um, you know, just little things like that. <clears throat> that I watched. I watched videos and I learned how to, you know, take care of those things and also how to maintain my wheel. Um, but she was selling the the spinning wheel and the looms as a package. Now, one of the looms I got rid of. <laughs> It was a wood frame with nails on two ends and the nails were all rusty and it was not something I would want to put nice yarn on. Um, so we took all those little nails out and turned it into a warping loom. Or a warping loom. A warp. <laughs> uh, and I was using it to um, warp out yarn for self-striping, dyeing self-striping yarn. <clears throat> so it did serve a, serve a purpose, but uh, it is no longer with me. Uh, it did not make the move from Texas to Washington, so it belongs to someone else now. <laughs> uh, but anyway, this did come with. So I believe this is a Becca loom. B-E-K-A, Becca. So I don't know for sure. I really have no idea. There are no labels on this in, in any fashion. Um, but I can tell you that a couple of these turny knobs, I still need to learn all the technical terms of a, of a loom, but these knobs on the end um, that rotate this bar uh, had tape on them. There's like masking tape residue here that I'm still trying to get off. It was like really old, crumbly masking tape. Um, but part of the problem was that the this plastic piece here, in the videos I watch of people using their Becca looms, um, this plastic piece is supposed to be attached to this wooden dowel. And so this plastic piece, piece is supposed to move with the dowel, right? Uh -huh. It did not do that. It was loosely spinning on here. So I did um, super glue this on here. Now it was very difficult because um, I couldn't remove this in any way from the loom. Um, and I had to just, you know, try to get glue in there. So it's, it's not the cleanest job. I can see some glue residue on the outside here, but, but it's on there now and that's good. Same thing on the other side. Um, so they had masking tape on here to stop it from moving. I don't know, but anyway, so I took off the masking tape as much as possible, added glue on there. We'll see how it works. I mean, it's definitely not um, like a brand new Ashford rigid head of loom where you can just like spin it and it clicks and maintains the tension. Um, and I don't know that that's how this was originally designed to behave. I think maybe these, um, these little stoppers here, right? You manually lift it up and then rotate and then put it back down. And it's just supposed to keep it from spinning back um, with, you know, tension on there. But I don't know. I don't know. 
This is going to be an experiment, and I like experiments, so it should be fun. Uh, but yeah, this is all, you know, I've got all the pieces I'm pretty sure that I need. I have, it came with one rigid heddle, <laughs> so I have no choice in my dents per inch, excuse me, DPI, for my first project. I'm just going to use the rigid heddle that came with it. I'm not going to put any more money into this until I find out whether or not I enjoy this craft. So that's what this experiment slash project is going to be. So this um, this rigid heddle says it's from Shocked Spindle Company and it has the number eight on it. Uh, if you can see, Shocked Spindle Company. Um, so I'm pretty sure, and I did get out my tape measure, and there are four of these uh, plastic pieces per inch. And if you multiply four by two, you get eight. So then there will be eight because you count the slit plus the hole. So there are eight of those, four holes, four slits per inch. Hence the number eight, right? Uh, please correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that means <laughs> eight dents per inch DPI. Anyway, <laughs> so that's what I'm going to use with this. And then um, it also came with two, uh, I know the name of this piece, shuttles. It came with two of these shuttles. They're the same size, made out of wood and everything, and they're long enough for the loom. <clears throat> so uh, I pulled one of them out and, um, and that's pretty much it. Um, there are some other random wood pieces in that container. Uh, it came with a container of, you know, this was in there and this was in there. There's another shuttle in there. I'll find out. Anyway, so that's, that's what I have to work with. Now, I don't really have this, this loom. Um, I don't have a, a stand for it. I don't have a way to clamp it down. So warping it should be interesting. Um, I also don't have a tool to put on the other side for warping. So I've, I'm gonna rig up, uh, I've got a TV tray here with my <laughs> ball winder on it. And I'm just gonna do my best to use that. <laughs> I'm just gonna experiment. Uh, and then I did pick out some yarn and I laid out um, a plan for how I want to use the colors because of course I don't want to do just you know the warp one color and the weft one color I want to play around with designs and stuff so let me show you the yarn that I have for this project okay so I'm using <clears throat> gosh excuse me I just I just had lunch and I I don't know, I have to keep clearing my throat. Um, but I'm just using a bunch of uh, Baby Bee 100% acrylic uh, Sweet Delight, and I've got different colors here. Um, so some of these I got on clearance. Um, there we go, $1.90, like seriously, that's awesome. Uh, so some of these I got on clearance, some of these not. Uh, but I have, this is, it looks like Snuggle. Snuggle, is that the color? That is the color, number 108. Um, so this is yellows, green, yellow, green, white. Uh, and then I have this blue, which is Surf Baby. Uh, just a really nice pale blue. And then I have this other blue that's, also pale but a darker shade um, as you can see I was using this in another project and ended up ripping it out and so I don't have the ball band so I don't know what color this is and then and then I have this oh, it's just this uh, what's the what's the word I'm looking for it's a super light gray it's almost white um, it's not white because when I hold it up next to the white, 
it is not but it's it's just got this light gray tint to it so uh, it just I think it'll look really nice with these colors so my plan is to have um, a thick blue stripe in the middle and then uh, a light blue stripe that's a little bit thinner on either side and then a yellow stripe that's even a little bit thinner <laughs> on the ends and then put this really pale gray in between all of those that's the plan uh, I've mapped out the numbers and everything so I do have a total of 80 spaces here um, because it's 20 inches wide I should have said that earlier I measured this this is 20 inches wide and there's eight oh eight times 20 is 160 right yeah so half of that is 80 okay that works that works okay <laughs> because my plan will involve 74 I guess 74 loops of these colors so it should fit on here I swear <laughs> okay that's the plan so let's um, let's get to warping and see if I can figure out how to do that um, based on the YouTube videos I've been watching <laughs> so today did not go like I planned <laughs> I was getting all set up to start warping the loom and I realized I hadn't glued all the pieces let me show you so I have the loom set up on these boxes because I think this is how I'm gonna have to prop it up to warp it but um, yeah I had only glued this plastic piece with super glue and uh, I went to start warping and this one was not glued so uh, yeah you can see I did not do a very neat job but um, <coughs> excuse me what I had access to was Gorilla Glue so uh, that's that's the glue job that I did and I'm laughing because it's not neat in any way some of the glue dripped into these ridges so yeah we'll see how that goes for the most part I did keep it here on the edge and it kind of there wasn't really room to lift up the plastic and put glue underneath it so I was just trying to glue it on from the side so I did just give it Sort of full coverage hoping that would do a good job so we'll see I guess a part of this will be comparing this glue job to this glue job oh god something just fell <laughs> so I am gonna be setting up my warping here <laughs> for the second time today um, and I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to take this microphone off so I'm not attached to this phone because there's going to be a lot of strings going on here and, and whatnot. But um, I forgot to mention, I am uh, thinking of, of trying to make a scarf out of this. So not just a piece of cloth, but maybe making a scarf out of this, we'll see. So I'm going to do some measuring and we'll, we'll see what happens, okay?
Oh, okay. Uh, the hard part is finished. I think that's the hard part. Um, hmm. I don't know, but look at these colors. Look at, oh man, it doesn't help that my warp is crooked and all the things, but this piece did not move, uh, which is good. This, however, did fall, and, uh, and my husband helped me pick it up and assist me with the remainder of the <laughs> warping, uh, which was really fun, but okay, so now I gotta twist it. I gotta twist all this back here. And then uh, and set up the heddle and attach over here right and so just just all that stuff to do okay so it's time to do the winding part which should be interesting but um, you're supposed to put something in between the layers of yarn so that they don't um, twist on each other and get uneven uh, so, uh, I'm going to be resourceful and use, um, just paper. <laughs> so, uh, I have lots of paper lying around the house, um, so that's what I'm going to attempt to use, is just regular sheets of paper. Now, the loom is 20 inches wide and the scarf is almost that wide, so you know, 11 inch paper is not going to be wide enough, so I'm going to have to put two sheets of these and then roll, but I think that will be manageable, so I'm going to do this. So I took the whole setup off of its precarious perch and it is now on the table, uh, which is very nice. So I'm going to do the um, winding over here, adding in the paper. And, uh, and then we'll go to the next, next phase. That's better, isn't it? Oh. Oh. Fancy things that I learn. Okay, let me get some of this stuff out of there. Okay, um, I'll put this over in here.
then I think I put this on backwards. I think this is the side I'm supposed to be working with the shuttle. And that's the side I should be winding onto. Hmm. Yeah, because this is facing me. to reverse this, but for now. Okay, so I realized that I wound this on the wrong side, because this is the side where I should be working, which means this should be wound over there. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just tie up that side and then whisk it all over there and just go with it because, <laughs> ah, it's a learning experience. Okay, so I'm going to flip this around and tie up the other ends. So this is the end that was around the ball winder, and I tied the loop in a figure, figure eight knot here, trying to help keep it somewhat organized, and I'm now kind of regretting that decision.
Okay, so I grabbed a size 7 crochet hook. It has this tiny, tiny hook on it. <laughs> I would definitely not crochet this yarn with this hook, but it does fit through the hole, which is what I need. Um, so it should catch the yarn enough. I also pulled over a chair because whew, leaning over this table is really doing a number on my back. So, And I feel like this is a good sitting job. I was thinking of going out and watching TV to do this, but um, but I'm not going to. So I think what I'm going to do is the strands that are down are going to stay in the slats, and the strands that are up I'll pull through the holes. Um, so now I have to decide, do I do the hole to the left or the right of the slat? Um, I think I'll go to the right. sure if sitting is going to work. Well, let me start over here. So if I'm going to go to the right, the right, I need to... Okay, I don't know if sitting is going to work now. Because I'm going to lean over. get this chair out of here. Okay, I finished threading all those eyes. Woohoo! Okay, so now I'm gonna start tying.
So I can see why this is usually the side that stays out because all these knots in here when they roll up are going to bunch things up but whatever that's what I got to do. So I just got to move the papers over here, start winding over here and then I think I'll be ready to start weaving. more space like that like that oh but upside right side up oh brother Yeah, I think I needed the taller bit on top so we could sit. But then how would I get it to sit up here? I bet I do have this upside down and I bet the yarn is supposed to go, the warp is supposed to go over these beams here. And that helps with putting the pedal down. Because I'm going to get the shed this way. There's nothing to hold the strands here to make it go the other way. Yep. <gasps> wow. Okay. Wow. Okay. 